Welcome to the Crazy Wisdom Podcast. Uh, for the second time, I've got Eric Newton, uh, and he is interested in expanding consciousness. Uh, so we're probably going to go right into there, but uh, 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 but welcome to the show. Thanks, Stuart. It's uh, I'm I'm tickled to be here. I'm honored you brought me back. I love talking <laughs> to you. Let's do it. It's been uh, been so long since the last time we uh, we we did the interview. It must have been three years ago, uh, back uh, in San Francisco. Um, talking purely about Urbit, if I recall. Purely about Urbit, and 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 there we go again. Now I'm doing another another deep dive into Urbit, um, and uh, and also as well to go into the other one uh, called Keynode uh, and Plunder, yeah. uh, the three three different uh, branches of what Urbit was originally promising. And I'm very excited to go back into Urbit. And I don't think this this particular episode will be specifically on Urbit, but although I would love to talk about that as well. Um, I guess, yeah. What, what what in in terms of the consciousness landscape, mm. uh, what have what have kind of been your most recent learnings? Well, I la I laugh at that because it's both a hundred percent true that I am deeply and utterly unqualified to talk about consciousness. <laughs> You've got it. I mean, everybody's got consciousness, so everybody can talk And yet about everybody, it. yeah. And yet everybody has their experience. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's like right there laid in front of you, you're, uh, you have an eternal option to explore it, you know, for yourself. And, um, and, and the reason I, you know, the reason I told you that that's all I'm thinking about these days and that you put it in the intro there is because uh, I, I'm I've, I'm exercising that option right now. You know, every time I um, sit back and get deeply quiet and surrender all the bullshit, uh, I get really clear that the only thing worth doing is... Maybe there's nothing worth doing, but all we have is this experience, this conscious experience, and expanding consciousness is the only thing to do. Mine, others, expanding it. It doesn't have to be human. I don't care. It's like the one thing that there is to do. And and, and I don't want it to be woo. You know, I've got this, uh I've got this little daughter. Um I'm I'm responsible to her in the most visceral, unbelievably committed way, commitment beyond words. And I have this absolute unparalleled responsibility to her, to her well-being, to her growth. And and so I can't, I can't afford to just um you know, spiritually bypass the truth and, uh, and talk about mysticism that goes nowhere. Uh, because, you know, her reality is right fucking there on the ground and I'm responsible to it. So mm -hmm. it has to be real. And at the same time, it's what I care about. Like consciousness is the thing. It's mm -hmm. the thing. It's this, this is, this is it right here. Our job is to expand it for her, for everyone. So that's what I'm up to these days. Brilliant. Uh, there's a lot of questions and a lot of and just some um, comments as well. I was I one of the my favorite things about my new home Buenos Aires is the fact that there's uh, like four just absolutely epic parks uh, on rivaling Central Park. One of which happens to be a zoo, uh, also uh, like a literal zoo. Uh, but uh, but uh, there's an interesting story behind the zoo, which I've discovered, uh, and. The zoo is, uh, they call it the Eco Park in now uh, because uh, they're uh, in Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is the capital of Argentina. Uh, and uh, so it's kind of, kind of like Washington, D.C., mixed with New York, mixed with L.A., with a little bit of a hint of San Francisco in it, all in one city. Uh, and so it's got the, nat the national uh, uh, government. And the national government was in charge of the zoo, uh, but there was a lot of activism against the zoo to essentially say, hey, these animals are being mistreated. Um, and uh, let's uh, 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 and so they actually tore it down, but they couldn't get rid of all the animals. Uh, and so there's a lot of animals still there inside the zoo, uh, the ones they couldn't figure out how to place them, how to find them a new home. And uh, and so every day, I, I, not every day, but I walk through this park pretty regularly. Um, and I had this beautiful moment uh, watching the camel 
and then uh, connecting with the elephant as well uh, and this large elephant. And I've been doing it. I've, I've been I've been uh, researching. Uh, I've recently got into polo. I know this is a long tangent. Uh, uh, I recently got got into polo, which is uh, on horseback. Uh, polo itself, I'm not very drawn to as a sport. I'm thinking about creating my own sport on horses um, for various reasons that I won't get into now. But um, and so this 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 consciousness part that you talk about, and you talk about your daughter as well, and and the, and it's interesting. Like a human, there's the adult human, and then there's the child human consciousness inside of those two is are very different. And then we got the animals as well. Um, and uh, and so yeah. it's like it's it's very interesting to think about humans humans are so much more complex uh than animals animals are very simple um and children are probably very simple do you agree with that yeah but there's an emerging complexity that you can't ignore Ooh, interesting go more into that well you can see you can see agendas starting to develop that um like nascent agenda for sure. But in gen agenda and uh, goal setting and attention, and then the suffering that comes from that. And then the suffering causes more agenda, mm. you know, like a, it's another, it's like the suffering causes another strategy, which is a new agenda. And then that can contradict the previous one. And then for her navigating those is really tough. I mean, her little three-year-old self can get really wound up in you know tied up in knots between competing goals and it's uh it's it's beautiful to see because it's what we all do and it's also heartbreaking you know in some sense that purity that she has can never last uh but my experience with pets for example is that they the cap out pretty quick you know they they um the agendas are pretty simple <laughs> and they just want the um, food. They just want the yeah. food. They just want to, yeah. 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 There's not a lot of projection into the future or referencing uh -huh. of the past. Uh, -huh. uh, it's very, it's like, it's like, uh, uh, mechanically defined, uh, mechanically forced Zen, you know, they're just, they're very much in the moment. There's a bliss in it. You know, the beauty of the, 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 I always, I, I love the wisdom of dogs who have three legs, uh, -huh. You know, they're just being dogs uh, in that moment. There's no suffering. There's no suffering around the fact that they don't have a leg. There might be pain, but there's a, but there's no suffering. Um, but my kid has suffering, mm -hmm. you know, she has pain about pain. She has that, that meta awareness. And, um, and that's the thing that that's heartbreaking. Uh, and unavoidable maybe unavoidable yeah actually i think unavoidable i'll, I'll go so far as to say yeah. it's definitely unavoidable and Poor yet child. it can also be transcended as an adult human yeah, i exactly. think you can uh with, with the kind of awareness you can transcend suffering you can realize that pain is unavoidable it's a signal it's an important signal it's a component of consciousness you know it's an impo it's a component of awareness without pain you can't in fact be aware or alive as we know it you Ooh. don't have to suffer. Uh, you don't yeah. have to suffer. And um, and learning that distinction is like one of these great leaps of maturity that, yeah, it's a great, it's a hard, important it's a hard leap. One. It's a hard one. It's a get. hard one. Yeah. Yeah. You have to always relearn it. Yeah. Uh, okay. There's something you said that made me want to take this into, into a tangent and it is a pretty far, far out there tangent, um, uh, in regards to, oh yeah, it was the, uh, three-legged dog, um, and, and the, the suffering em, em, embedded in that and, or no, the suffering embedded in the human version of that, which is like losing a limb, uh, or what I've seen recently and where, where we can take this is the, 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 um, the Neuralink with the, uh, with the guy who had the Neuralink installed, uh, who is like, makes sense. Like that guy now has a new life for him, for himself. Uh, but it's a line that was crossed that is for me, uh, very like, uh, it's like, well, would I do that? Uh, and, and I don't have any deficiencies that, that I need. I mean, I got this chronic pain thing, but like, it's mostly gone and it's like, 
uh, I would maybe consider something like that in that in that realm. Um, but uh, but yeah, like, what's your take on it? And 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 um, what what do you know about this emerging field? I didn't watch the video. <laughs> I know about it. I read the headlines about the video. I know that it occurred. <clears throat> and so I don't know about the specifics of Neuralink or what, you know, Elon's trying to do. But I've been reading sci-fi since I was a tot. <laughs> so I've been thinking about this stuff for a long time. And, and you know, I when I say I'm interested in consciousness, it's really clear to me that it doesn't have to be human consciousness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm just on the side of awareness. You know, I don't I don't even know if consciousness is mo you know consciousness may in fact be mostly an illusion, but there's a component of it that is in fact occurring, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's the substrate as far as we can tell of of reality. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a base reality, but there is a base reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But our only experience of it is through this thing, through this intermediate substrate called our subjective consciousness. And um, I, I, you know, I'm not a speciesist. I'm a consciousnessist. Like I'm, I'm on the side of that thing, and uh, and I and I, I want it to expand. And, and I want to share it, you know? And uh, when I think about what something like Neuralink is making possible, um, mm. it's a new frontier. Mm. It's a new expansion. Mm. And, and, and you can, and I can hypothesize about it up or down the stack. I can mm. say going up the stack, it expands new opportunities. It creates new realms of awareness that will themselves be illusion, but Ooh. are also real. You know, the, the, it's a paradox, but it's true. It's like, yeah. it's both an illusion and it's also real. You know, virtual spaces are definitely a projection, but they are also in fact occurring. Yes. It, just yeah. as our perception yeah. of, you know, whatever the thing is, is not absolutely correct. And it's delayed by a few milliseconds. And, you know, it's a memory of a, of a, of an illusion, but it is also actually real. And um, so I can go up the stack that way and be like, fine, go for it. And I can also go down the stack and be like, well, but if it's not really the base reality, then what uh -huh. matters? Yeah. Like yeah. what yeah. is the base reality? <laughs> and uh, and of course, you know, I want to explore both ways. I want to get to the base reality. Uh -huh. uh, you could invert that and say that's up the stack or, you know, I don't know. I, I want to get to the base reality, but I also know that if I were at the base reality, I would still wonder if that was the base reality <laughs> because the, the ever ongoing, never ending mystery, pain in the ass yeah. beauty yeah. of conscious awareness is that you can't actually fucking know what's true, <laughs> except that there's an experience happening. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and if it's that, and by the way, just since we're down the rabbit hole, yeah. if that's true of us conscious beings, it's also true of any conscious being. Mm. So if God is conscious, mm. unless you define God as that meta awareness that knows the answer to this question, mm. which you could, but if God is fucking conscious, God has the same, <laughs> the mm. same problem. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, enjoy. I want to, I want to uh, stop there for a second. So uh, if there is a being god and that is the awareness then the awareness would also stuck in the problem because oh but maybe the the, the there's like a if no yeah i can't i can't i can't figure I'll, out. I'll try i'll try again because i you know this is where i i get on skinny branches because to speak you know a lot of this is semantics yeah. and to speak intelligently about consciousness you kind of have to lay out all your definitions and priors yeah. and this is what philosophers basically do they yeah. spend decades <laughs> learning you know embedding and then re-articulating their priors just so they can get to the question of what the fuck is it yes yeah, yeah, yeah. and i haven't done that work and yeah. i'm never going to i'm not <laughs> i'm just not going to do it yeah 
Uh, so I'm always going to be a tourist in the in the serious world. Uh -huh. But in the world of my experience, I can say that, um, you know, what I understand consciousness to be, uh, it it as I understand consciousness to be instantiated, um, one of its rules is you can't actually know the nature of truth except that okay. an experience is yep. happening. Yep, yep. And, um, and that that so therefore would be true of any conscious being. And when we talk about God, we talk about this conscious thing, this conscious magic being, I don't want to be de minimis about it. I don't want to be flippant about it. But like, that is the way that most organized religions that speak to the masses talk about a God this is this conscious being. Yeah. And if he's a conscious being, he's got the same problem we do. He doesn't know if the base mm -hmm. reality, if he's in the base reality, he doesn't know if he's aware he except and, maybe if the being is universal. So like, yeah, if the being is the whole thing mm. in which there is no problem like that of knowledge, but this is, yeah, this is getting into very like, what the fuck? And are then if the being about? is the whole thing, is there in fact consciousness because there's no duality, there's nothing to bounce it off against. And oh, so interesting. Yeah, we yeah, exist yeah, so that we can it. be the like eyes that see itself. Yeah. I don't know. Then you get wrapped up in all these circles. And so I, you know, when I get all, all the way out on, on, you know, on those yeah. uh, tangents, I, <laughs> I come back to, okay, okay, okay. So what's the wisdom here? Uh -huh. And the wisdom that I, you know, when I distill it all down, <laughs> the wisdom is actually just dumb, dead simple. It's just, it's just this, it's just like joy is here and now, mm -hmm. you know, the joy is here and now. And it doesn't matter where you are on the spectrum of intelligence or where you are in the stack of um, a base reality. Are you in the base or base reality? It doesn't really matter. You know, if you're conscious, joy, presence, peace, all that stuff that we seek, it's really only, actually only available right here. Mm. And no achievement gets you closer to it. No possession, yeah. no realization, except that one that it's just, it's just right here. Yeah. And like, you know, you can feel it, right? Like when you surrender to that, there's this great exhale. There's this great release of tension in the body. There's this great calming of the mind, mm. you know? And then there, for me, there's this hilarity, like, <laughs> After I like to surrender all that, the fear kind of washes through and washes away. I'm like, this shit's yeah. actually really fucking funny. Really good. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. I, I love that point of the hilarity. It's something I've discovered recently too, uh, only in the last few years of, of just like how uh, comical it all is. And, and uh, there's like, uh, uh, and th this really helped with fear because uh, fear has been a big part of my life for the past few years. And uh and uh, it only recently, it might have actually had something to do with our most recent conversation, um, was the sort of like um, laughing in the face of fear is really yeah. important. Like it's really, really important, really hard as well. Because uh, when you're in that fear state, it's like it seems so real. Uh, yeah. and, and, uh, and then, but it's not, it's never real. Somebody recently mentioned something I really liked, which is... Um, if the the it's the the fear is always based off of an assumption of what's going to happen in the future usually it's in like the yeah. next few seconds basically but but uh uh but uh but so it's it's in the future future doesn't exist future will exist it'll be, we'll call it the present but like it doesn't matter it's it's like our brains can't understand everything that's going on so they can't predict it and this is the one of the really challenging things going back to that suffering thing is that the human being is always trying to predict its future uh, mm -hmm. because it's like it's 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 trying to control it and it's also totally outside of our control um and like that tension between those two things is, is responsible for a lot of the problems i think we have in the, on this planet but who and, knows? and we yeah. can't and and we can't not do it Be, mm -hmm. you know the realization mm -hmm. of that the that realization then often leads people to another fear mm -hmm. which is oh shit i'm stuck I have to not do this thing that humans do, which is project ourselves into the future and then stress <laughs> about it. Yeah, I'm just going to stop doing that. I'm just going to stop doing yeah, that. Yeah, which you can't. You just can't yeah. not, you can't, you have, you will do that Yeah. as a human. You know, another similar one that people who start, I think, 
reading and thinking about this stuff get to is, oh, my ego identity is actually the problem. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, my, my ego identity needs to go away. Which makes a lot of sense because you start to realize that, that the lot of suffering is, is the result of this ego identity, which is really just like a response to fear. Your ego, this whole identity you've developed is really just a lot of fear responses. It's like skills you've developed to avoid this fear or that fear, you know, and suddenly you're really good at coding or, you know, singing or you, you love opera or, you know, you know how to talk to girls or whatever the fucking skill is you developed but it's all just some fear you were trying to avoid. Uh -huh. And so you're like, Oh, that whole construct is bullshit. Fuck that construct. I have to kill it. You know, I got to be ego free. And you like write about it and spend years meditating. You go through the dark night of the soul. Ah, oh, my whole identity is complete bullshit. And then you just realize, Oh yeah, no, uh, <laughs> I have, I can't not have an identity. Yeah. You uh, can't not have an ego consciousness. It's just, you don't have to be so, associated with it yeah yeah and then yeah. Oh, yeah. associate oh yeah and then you go like tested. yeah yeah uh okay uh so really interesting let's bring it back to the the original question which was about uh making the jump into a new simulation uh uh, <laughs> uh i've thought about this a lot i'm not a simulation theorist person i don't believe that this is a simulation according to that specific theory i don't think that this reality is a simulation in the same way that uh, we the simulations that we're going to create um so that's my essential prior going into this uh but we are going to create simulations like that's going to happen uh that is already happening we've already created simulations those simulations are going to just get better and better and better more real life um that, and that's one part and I, I have, I'm aware of that part. And then there are two other parts uh, that that seem important for this conversation. One is what Neuralink represents. And that's like almost bringing a new simulation into our brains, which are simulating that base reality, which you mentioned is only knowable through the simulation that we have in our heads of that base reality. So Neuralink is going to bring a new simulation in there. And then there's another one, uh, which doesn't talk so much about simulations but goes into the dna and like changes our dna um and that's like uh biotechnology uh and i'm not in this way of talking i'm not sure how to fit that with the other two but those are the three kind of really important things that seem to be happening um and i really liked what you said about up the stack and down the stack uh and and like yeah our understanding of this world is is very much just like a simulation of the world um but I guess it's more real than those simulations. I get, well, here's a question for you. Do you agree that it's more real? Do you agree that the, the, the hallucination that our brain is providing us of reality is more real than maybe any video? I mean, definitely more than any video game currently. Um, have you used the Vision Pro yet? Mm -mm. No. Uh, yeah, I, I ask myself this question all the time. And, and where I am now is that, no, it's not more real. It's differently real. Yeah, differently real. I like it. Yeah. It's just, you know, there's. um, Yeah, the, I mean, we are innocent. We're, 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 as you just said, we're simulating base reality, whatever that is, our, our basest reality that we can get to. We're simulating it to see it. And um. I don't know. Maybe that comparison doesn't actually bring enough clarity to the question because, you know, where I was going to go is, well, it's a simulation. The other simulation is also a simulation. They're both simulations, but that, mm -hmm. that's not quite right. I mean, I guess that we all have a felt experience that mm. the, the touching grass is somehow more real than, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, Roblox, but, um, and when we're completely embedded uh, in, in, in hyper-realistic simulations they're they might feel more real, but we're, we're going to have the sense that they're different somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and probably should have that sense so that we can distinguish between types of realities. That'll just be a useful skill to do. Uh, but I still have this instinct that, that, you know, it's still just a component of experience. Uh, -huh, yeah, it's still just a component of this experience. You may prefer one or the other, our, our meat, selves might be more attuned to one or the other and feel more comfortable um you know and neurologically and chemically we might we might respond better 
to touching grass, but it's still just a component of experience. And mm. to kind of to my first point, it doesn't really matter where you are on the experience stack. You always have access to peace. <laughs> yeah. And, tr and, and truth. You always have access yeah. to truth. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and I don't, and, and also acknowledging that there's no goal. Neither one of those is the goal. Like there's, uh, those uh, are just totally arbitrary, subjective goals that I've chosen. Peace, mm -hmm. truth, and expanding consciousness, mm -hmm. you, you know, as silly as they sound, I've chosen those, but they are arbitrary. There's no objective source of truth that's saying this must be the goal. Except that, you know, the God person, I'm, I'm joking, but like the, the, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, except the god person yeah, yeah. Who, who's who's stuck with the same problem so why trust him <laughs> yes. um yeah. you know and if there is the meta meta god meta meta god doesn't so much care yeah. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know uh yeah Go right i mean like you're already running the process that you're here to run if there is a meta meta god you're 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 struggling through this question interesting <laughs> And this is what the deists, I, I, I believe the deists, uh, who were the, the founders of the United States were all deists. I believe they, they were all, they all believed that there was a God, but that God was like somewhere else and didn't really care. Um, uh, and like, was just off, like doing God stuff. Uh, cause why would he care? He's like busy on the meta, 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 meta game. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting. Do you know anything about, cause you're, you're in San Francisco. I see your surfboards behind you for the listeners who aren't looking on the video, uh, and you've got the wetsuits, um, and, uh, you're in San Francisco, San Francisco, great, great place to go, go surfing. And I want to talk about that later, but my first question is about, um, the, the, uh, consciousness revolution in the 1960s. I'm doing a new series with my dad mm -hmm. where we're, uh, going into the early computing industry in the 1980s. Um, and, uh, it's really interesting and I'm really excited about this show. And I know that a lot of people that my dad and I are going to talk to don't really have a lot of good answers on this specific theme of the consciousness revolution in the 1960s, but it definitely plays a role in the, in the early computing industry. Um, and I, I like, what do you think happened in the 1960s in San Francisco? And like, why is it important? Hmm. Well, let me let me answer your question in a roundabout way by mm -hmm. starting with something that I'm doing that I'm excited about um, that references what you're talking about. Uh, I have a friend named Yosha Bach who is an AI, well, he's a consciousness researcher in applied AI, right? And um, he and I have been talking a long time about this, the question. And also what, what the heck happened in San Francisco in the sixties, like what was good of it. And, um, we're launching an Institute at the moment, uh, tentatively called the California Institute for Machine Consciousness, oh, wow. <laughs> which is intended to study consciousness mm -hmm. because, you know, none of the commercial projects are actually working on consciousness. They're working on AGI or versions of that or how they define it in various ways, but they're not actually working on consciousness because there's no profit incentive to study consciousness itself. And in fact, it's really thorny because you get into questions of suffering and you know, there's all sorts of utilitarian traps around that. And it's just, it's messy <clears throat> and nobody probably can define it, you know? So, um, but it, it's also a question that needs to be explored. And we have the sense that uh, the public perception of inevitable AI mm. and of machine consciousness mm. really deserves a shift. It just deserves a, a vibe shift. Like it, it's, it's rooted in fear or mercantilism at the moment. <laughs> yes. And, um, and it's not, uh, but it's not rooted in hope. Uh -huh. And there and or love yeah. for fuck's sake, yeah, 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 yeah. you know. And there was a uh, there was a time, a mythical time perhaps, uh, and it was really was centered in California. Ca mm -hmm. California was was the beacon of hope and love and conscious awareness um, for a phase, uh, and San Francisco and Berkeley were the epicenters of that, uh, and you know innovation sprouted from that and it was really 
uh, it was a golden era of innovation because it was a, a hopeful era. And the reason that we're, we're calling the Institute, the California Institute, is because we want to reference that. We want to reference that golden era, you know, and, and um, use that as a stepping stone towards a vibe shift uh, yeah. to be hopeful and excited about something that frankly is inevitable. There's no, <laughs> there is no going back at this point. Uh, we can't, there, the incentives are too strong to pursue development of this. And it's technology. already out. It's already, it's like, it, it, like the open source is, is here. As soon as the open yeah. source does what GPT-4 does, it'll have GPT-4. And as soon as it gets five, then it'll get five. And it's like, it's now a year behind, but until, you know, next year maybe then they'll then they'll develop yeah. ways to 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 do it so it's like it's, it's and, here and you could sure. even and you could argue that llms are not going to be the thing anyway but they're yeah. obviously yeah, a yeah, stepping yeah. stone to the thing you know yeah. and so yeah it's not that genie is not going back in the bottle yeah and um and i and i really deeply respect the doomers uh, sense of responsibility around this like i yeah. really do get it Ooh. it's like it's you know that responsibility needs to be taken seriously uh but we can't, but um, pretending we can wish this thing away, even through regulation, is not, in fact, the responsible approach. Yeah. The responsible yeah. approach, you, you know, if you shut off research into consciousness or AGI by law abiding responsible parties, uh, the only people doing it will be, you know, criminals yeah. and the irresponsible parties because people are going to, in fact, do it. Yeah. So uh, we can't. We can't put our heads in the sand, as with all innovation in the human experience. We have to move forward, but we should move forward intentionally, consciously, yeah. thoughtfully, um, and we should have the best uh, people doing it. Frankly, and 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 that's sort of our take. Is like let's mm -hmm. reference that era. Okay, so that's a long ass way of trying to say, I don't know what happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you are right. It did. <laughs> it did happen. <laughs> it did it was a thing let's bring it back yeah I, that's as kind of as close as i can get well uh, you probably have to talk to a historian to understand what were the elements yeah. where it came together that caused it to happen i don't know yeah well and, the, and that's the the what you said about yasha and your ideas about uh what happened that was good is a really interesting thing because i i grew up in in san francisco i was uh in the suburbs of san francisco so i wasn't like directly involved with that the city um at, in the in that time period afterwards but everybody that i grew up with was all deeply influenced it by it and then you know and that's that's like the person to person way like you really get a sense being there that it's like inside the culture but then with the internet it just and the it just expanded to the rest of the world so that now i talk to people all over the world who are shares a bit of the cognitive grammar the cultural grammar uh, uh, of what happened in the 1960s. Um, and I grew up thinking it was a unavowed positive thing that everything that came out of that time period was awesome. Uh, and hmm. you know, science, art, all these different things, uh, and that there's nothing wrong that happened. Uh, and then I've found out that yes, there are, there are some problems and I still, I, and I've been trying to figure out what those problems are. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I think that's part of the reason why I'm in, doing that why I'm interested in this early computing industry as well. Um, and the really answer is always complicated, isn't it? The real yes. answer is always complicated. And this is what I love about talking to academics is because you talk to an academic and they'll be, they'll, who is studying the thing that you're interested in, they'll have all the arguments and they'll also have all the counter arguments and have gone through everything. And so they'll just like bring up like, well, no, that's wrong. And then, and like, and then, uh, and, uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, and so what in your take, what, what did you guys discover if you guys can share uh, uh, about the what what was good and what's worth keeping from that era? I don't know, honestly, I don't think we've put enough thought into that. Mm. What was good versus what was bad? Mm. I don't know. There was certainly a naivete that came from just having resource abundance. Mm, interesting. The connection between resource abundance and the consciousness revolution is an interesting one. Because that's really you know, post what the 1960s were. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was the post-war, like, I, I, 
we we hate on the boomers so much right now each generation hates the generation two generations back it seems uh, yeah and and um and you know the boomers but but the boomers are not at fault you know yeah. those individual people are not at fault they were a product of their times and their times were a product of um two successive absolutely devastating world wars that utterly mm -hmm. changed the fabric of mm -hmm. the human um mm -hmm. sociological experience and then resource distribution mm -hmm. And uh, certain things won, you know, uh, the nation that was the newest, the most bright eyed, the most innovative, but also the most geographically protected and um, and naturally resource rich kicked ass. And so all of its values got to um, uh, were given even more oxygen, you know, those resources compounded and. Um, the fear and austerity of the war era gave way to this um, exploration, a really important one. At least that's how I see it. My yeah. my really naive understanding of history paints it that way, that, that this, um, this post-war excited, hopeful exploration that was also a reaction to the austerity of the war period and those and their parents who had just gone through unimaginable pain yeah. and loss. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of creativity was going to come out of that, but it was also a super naive creativity. Uh, they didn't realize how lucky they were. Uh, they didn't realize how stupid they were. And so a lot of dumb shit was built too, you know, and now we're suffering those consequences. Yeah. <laughs> the, the creativity is also a new angle. I haven't thought of is that the, the 1960s were a very creative time. Like that was a golden age of creativity. Uh, whether it's an art and science and all these different things. And it has to do with abundance. Have you done any research on the term solar punk? Or have you heard it before? I think I've heard that once. I don't yeah. Don't know what it is. So cyberpunk, we were talking about science fiction. Cyberpunk is like the dystopian new version of science fiction that came out in the 1980s, probably. Uh uh, and it all, all comes like, I love reading the cyberpunk, but it's also like gnarly to read it. Cause it's like, okay, we have this accelerating technology. It's all out there. Uh, and all of our human problems are the same. They're even worse. Uh, uh, uh like just, it's not a, it's not a utopia. All the, all the stuff before 1960 was sort of utopian. There were, there were some science fiction that dealt with challenging problems as well. Uh, and so solar punk is like a burning man aesthetic. Uh, and apparently there's like one book, uh, and it was a really weird book. It's very, very strange. Um, uh, so there aren't very many examples of solar punk, but it's like, well, what happens, you know, take the solar, solar panels to their, to their ultimate degree, you know, like imagine they're really efficient. So they're really small. So they're not taking up like, you know, giant swaths of nature and such. And, 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 you know, like then you bring the artificial intelligence and, and like, well, what could, what could life look like with all this awesome technology and that naivete that we discussed kind of held in check. Um, and that's what so solar punk is. I've been realizing that Argentina is actually a great laboratory for, for solar punk. California could be, it will be, uh, but, but, I think there's a lot of regulation issues that are going to get in the way in California in terms of, in terms of it. Um, but I, I like the, I like the direction. Mm. I like the direction and thrust of what you're saying. Yeah. I'll just, you know, one of the things that causes, or, yeah. One of the thing that causes the naivete that we're referencing is mm. when people are only partially deeply aware, you know, mm. really deeply aware of one vertical love, but not suffering, for example, or like ignoring the one in favor of the other, thinking you can wish the other away. And there's and and the depth and breadth and wisdom that's um that's available though is to have more and more awareness of all of the uh the whole strat, the whole spectrum, you know. Mm -hmm. Um feel the pain more and the suffering more and the loss more and the brightness and love and kindness and human connection and all of it more, just feel it more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the more I meditate, the more I feel and the more I feel, the more awake I experience myself as, and that's like the goal. So that's my subjective goal. That's the one I keep talking about in one way or another. And um, I think it's worth sharing. And 
like moving forward with an optimistic uh approach to technology in the future i think has to encompass that like if you just if you're pollyanna about utopia and what technology can create for us you're 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 just being fake you know you're larping you're not yeah. really you're not really in reality and everybody senses it on some level you know and that's kind of the thing about burning man that people hate specifically uh, burning man it's uh, like uh, yeah uh, yes you guys created this utopian fucking village you know, Black Rock City, nobody has money. Uh, you share all your shit. Okay, yeah. How long is that going to last, you know, in a resource constrained uh, 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 world? Uh, uh, it's not. It's not going to last. It's one week. Mm -hmm. It works perfectly for exactly a week and then it dies. And, um, and, I, and I'm a burner. I love that. I love that thing. But let's not be naive about it. Let's know there's something really beautiful here to experience. There's something really beautiful to learn and bring back into our life. And there's deep suffering and there is unfair resource distribution yeah. and, uh, and pain is real, you know? Uh, and, um, and that experiment isn't going to be sustainable over uh, a broad spectrum of time. And, um, yet there's something really beautiful to have there. And same thing with the utopian views of technology. It's going to be complicated. It's just going to be complicated, but that doesn't mean we don't move forward. We have to move forward yeah. and we should move forward with hope and intention and yeah. optimism and with our full awareness. Yeah. We have to move forward, but it's also going to suck <laughs> and let's just know it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, the, the, it's, I, I love the, the fear versus caution. Uh, like, the the fear is is an illusion like yes it's there it exists you you feel it we feel it like but then you know it's an illusion the any extrapolation from that fear is an illusion and then but what what is you know what can we do knowing that there are dangers that this human body is going to die and that at at um you know it could die at any moment and and uh and and our whole evolutionary mechanism is to not have that happen and it's guaranteed going to happen uh and then, uh, you know, what do we do? And it's caution. I think caution is the same thing. And it's like, it's what we've been talking about. It's like, and I think caution may be the antidote to, to naivete because it's, mm -hmm. it's like, there are, there are, there are people who rip you off. There are people who will, who will like, yeah. who are stuck in animal consciousness, like total animal consciousness and they, yeah. they will not treat you kindly. Like, um, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are going to be externalities, um, that result from any good technology we create, you know, and the PR is never going to be yeah. thorough. <laughs> and, uh, and it, you know, yeah, all, all of that. Yeah. Okay. So we got about 15 minutes left. Uh, okay. So we could talk about surfing. Um, yeah. Have you surfed in the last week? I haven't, you know, I, um, I got pneumonia. Oh, I just, I'm a week out of it right now. Kicked the living shit out of me. I have mm. never been that sick. Mm. Um, so I haven't been in the water in a month because mm. I got sick. It expanded, it built in a pneumonia and now I'm getting over it. And now it's springtime in San Francisco. So you know what happens to the waves. They get blown out and uh, so interesting. And I didn't messy. Know that. Yeah, okay. winter, is the, winter is the season here. It's uh, big uh intense heavy but also pretty consistently clean oh. and then summer is small and windy oh. and spring is big but windy and is it because of oh, the weather windy. patterns what is the weather do you know the weather pattern that changes that uh only vaguely uh -huh. um I, I i know that the storms it's basically storms that drive swell uh -huh. um and oh, the farther out they are the cleaner the waves will be when they reach you because oh. you don't want wind like if you have a big a big storm far out uh it will drive cleaner waves as they move uh oh. over distance and then finally arrive at shore whereas if you have a storm close to shore it's going to bring all that wind and messiness and choppiness uh. with it uh, uh. uh so you want big storms far enough away that it can smooth out but not so far away that you don't feel the swell and um, that happens in the winter, basically. And then the other thing is, as I understand it, uh, 
when the inland valleys heat up in California in the summer, that pulls all the wind, that pulls all the cold air off of the ocean. That's uh, what which is why we get fog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. interesting. And yeah. it's also why we get the wind. So the wind is now an onshore breeze, which uh -oh. is the worst for surfing, right? Uh -oh. Whereas in the winter, it's the opposite. Uh -oh. Well, it's not so much the opposite, but there's a more of a neutrality. So you get these offshore breezes, um, which hold waves up and make them hollow. And these swells from far distances that are pretty smooth and clean. And so you get really epic surf at Ocean Beach. Very cool. Um, during the what, winter. What, uh, what does surfing do for you? Surfing is a constant struggle for me, um, a constant, constant struggle to be present. Um, yeah, maybe my biggest struggle and, and, and it might be my biggest struggle or, mm. or the embodiment of my biggest struggle. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. And I'll just acknowledge I've been surfing my whole life and I am not very good. <laughs> <laughs> I well, I mean, I what served my whole childhood. I uh -huh. served my whole childhood, and then, um, and then moved to the East Coast, and so didn't surf uh -huh. for the whole middle part of my adulthood, and then moved back here and started surfing again, uh, approaching my forties, and kept getting injured over and over because I was trying to surf like a sixteen-year-old, and it didn't work very well. Uh, so now I, I have, um. But that whole time I didn't surf, I would dream about surfing mm. pretty much weekly. Wow. It was deeply embedded in my conscious ident my my identity, my understanding of myself, just my awareness. It was always there lurking. And when I finally got back to the water, I started surfing again. So I feel like a lifelong surfer, but I actually only have these two chunks of time in youth and now kind of as an aging man. Uh. And um uh so I'm like I'm like, I have the lore and the familiarity and the comfort in the water that somebody who's been surfing their entire life would, but I actually only have the experience of a much, much shorter time. Um, and now that I'm old, I can't, my body can't, I'm not old, but you know, I'm mm. not 16. My body doesn't do what it used to be able to do. So I'm limited, but, um, so that's why I say I'm not very good. Mm. Uh, I'm super comfortable. I'm very like stable. I can surf pretty much any conditions. I surf all the time, but I'm not mm. a pro or anything approaching a pro. And uh, I'm definitely outclassed by the kids today. But the struggle for me, <laughs> the struggle is pushing. It's the constant pushing against what I should be versus what Ooh. I am. Like that's the like that's where suffering this whole thing of suffering yeah. that's where suffering lies is in the should it's yeah. it's a hundred percent in the should yeah. and the whole thing about serving is like if you fucking just surrender you surrender <laughs> totally yeah you surf you surf the waves that are not the waves that should yeah, be. yeah, yeah. interesting you surf them as you are not as you should be yeah and there's always a new one there's a new one that'll come right right Right, right after there's a new way that's that's yeah right yeah that's the thing because if you there's like this balance it's the, it is in fact the whole balance of yeah of life yeah. it's like if you surrender so much then you're just sitting at the lineup you're not surfing yeah. you're just like being <laughs> just hanging out and if you're hanging out you're meditating yeah. it feels yeah. good yeah but if you try to stand if you try to like paddle for and stand up in a wave in that state or if i do uh i'm not very effective because I don't have enough intention. You know, I don't have enough drive. I don't have enough speed, just mm. flat out speed. Mm. But if I'm too intentional, if I'm like, if I'm attached, you know, attachment is the word that people use in the personal de development space. So like I'm attached to the outcome of how I'm going to surf that wave and whether I'm going to get it, then I clench and I'm fucked. So there's this like balance, you know, I have to have enough intention to be able to paddle well and to, and to get going. Right. Like, but enough surrender to surf the wave that's in fact in front of me, not the one that should be there. And with the skills that I do have, not those that I should have. <laughs> and um, that seems like it's the whole damn thing. Right yeah. There. It's such you a know? it's surfing is the best sport in terms of the metaphor, like golf, does not have the same level of metaphor that that surf surfing has uh uh to the to life uh 
the my my the funniest thing I I just recently went on a surf trip. I'm so glad I did it before our winter down here um comes up as your guys' summer, our winter is as your summer is coming, our winter is leaving or our winter is coming. And uh so I went down to Mar del Plata, which is the 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 closest beach town to to Buenos Aires, and I uh, did some surfing down there. And it was really funny this time because now I'm at a place where I'm I can get a longboard out there. I can go all the way out and I can catch waves. Uh, I can just barely stand up on a wave um, once I've caught in the wave. Uh, um, and so the surrender piece is really funny because I spent so much time over the past few years trying to go to all the sites, the websites to understand the wave patterns, to know before I go surfing, whether the waves will be good. Uh, and then this, this time it convinced me like, it did not matter at all. Like it doesn't matter at all whether the waves were good because I'm not good enough to actually catch them. Like, <laughs> so it's like, it's like, it only matters if there are waves. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, and sometimes there are not waves. waves. Yeah, yeah, there are waves. So it's really funny about that focus. Like I'm so focused, I'm going to get out there, I'm going to do this thing. Uh, and then and then the surrender piece is, is such an interesting part because it's like, uh, first it's like actually getting through the fear to go out that far out where I can't touch the ground, where I'm in the deep ocean, uh, and the deep ocean, there's a lot of fear there for me. Um, uh, and it's similar to the, to the conscious, the fears around consciousness as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It's super interesting. Surfing so good. Um, at some point, uh, we, next time we should meet, we should go meet in Brazil to go surfing, uh, cause there's some great spots in Brazil. Uh, I'll be back in San Francisco eventually as well to, to do more surfing there as too. I would love that. You know, I've just newly moved to the sunset in San Francisco, which is the the foggiest of the foggy neighborhoods mm -hmm. during the summer, and summer is approaching. And I think I want to get my daughter and myself out of here as much of the summer as we can because uh, sun is so important yeah. to well being. <laughs> That's one of the hardest parts about San Francisco for me is that summer <laughs> just like plays with my mind. It plays with my mind so much because I grew up in Redwood City, which is forty five minutes south. Uh, and there it's beautiful. It's like Mediterranean climate, like in the summer, it gets too hot in the summer. Uh, but then San Francisco totally plays with my mind, like in the, in the summer. Yeah. We should talk about, we should talk more about fear and we should talk about death. Mm. I don't know what your time, um, limits are on this thing. We can do it some other time, but those are two threads that from our conversation, I don't think we pulled enough on. Yes. Interesting fear and death. Let's put a, let's do another one. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, what, uh, how can people find out more about you? Uh, hmm. you know, I don't have anything public. Fa oh, I have a Twitter account. Yep. Uh, at Newton law. My last name is Newton. I'm a lawyer at Newton law. That's my only public facing thing at the moment. Uh, someday I'm sure I'll have something I want to shill, but for the time being, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to hang out with me, uh, come find me on Twitter. I'm 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 available. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Good good to talk. Thank you.